Okay, this is our second half uh, after getting shut off on YouTube there. Not exactly sure what happened, whether it's the network here on this side or something to do with, with the Hangouts and so on. But anyway, glad to be back. I wanted to get this thing rolling just as soon as possible. And uh, while my mind is still moving in this direction and try to get everything caught up to speed. Now, what we've covered thus far are the first two portions of, of this approach that I'm using here in Africa. That, that Honestly, it's just working so very well for us. Um, and I'm not telling you that this is the answer everywhere, nor am I telling you I have the answer, period. I'm just telling you we have a beginning here that is very, very promising, okay? And basically what we're doing here, if you look at this, uh, you've got three concentric circles, and if you focus it properly right in the very middle, that's the sweet spot where we want to be with everything. Pardon my notes all around the edges here. Uh, I wasn't planning on using this particular part, but um, we, we talked about the F, which is the framework, or if you will, the worldview of the individual. How do you correct that? Well, the answer is real fast. Um, we need to give them an, a, a biblical worldview. Now, whether you're in America, South America, Asia, here in, in Africa, it doesn't matter. The worldview of the people we work with is tainted and skewed, and it needs to be changed. How do you do that? You take them back to the Word of God. You take them back to the book of Genesis at the very beginning of everything, and you work forward from there. Some of the things I've found that are very, very effective are, are dealing with the creation, how God made everything. Everything is answerable to Him. Everything God made was good. Um, ultimately, something bad happened. What was that bad? It was the sin in the book of Genesis chapter 2. Um, we, could, we could talk all night about these things and how they correct the world thinking, worldview thinking, the framework from which people reference the world. And it doesn't matter where we come from. We all have bits and truth, uh, bits and pieces of truth, and we also have bits and pieces of error. And the error has to be corrected. And the only way to do that is with the Word of God. So we bring them to the Word of God and use this beginning approach. Now, if you use something like New Tribe's approach, um, I forget, it's like 50-some lessons. It could, take you for, uh, it could take you a year if you do a lesson a week. Obviously, uh, not, a, not something that we want to see have to happen. So we, we have to be asking, okay, is there, a, is there a better way? And I believe there is. And that is uh, to approach it with this frame approach that we're talking about. I can't get too far into that because of time. But then second, we went on to talk about the seed, if you will. Now, the seed is the gospel itself. And as you plant the gospel, now, as you plant the gospel, you're telling people about sin. You're telling people about, uh, about the fact that they cannot redeem themselves. You're dealing with the, with the issues of the necessity of receiving Christ, that Christ alone is the one who saves, um, that self-effort cannot, cannot do anything to get us right with God. These concepts have not only got to be taught, not just a verse given to a person, but they have to grasp it. And, and the only way to do that is what we're going to talk about here in just a moment, in my view, and it is to bring in the equation of the Q. And so up to now, what we've talked about are the two revelations. There must be revelation. People cannot get saved apart from the revelation of God. That's why God gave us the Bible. And you and I are to be Bible teachers, Bible witnesses, Bible preachers. As we take the truth, we declare the truth to others. Now, having said all that, the seed becomes the knowledge that gives them the basis to call upon Christ as their Savior. Now, if I stop here, this is where the, the framework, the seed, if you will, the, the understanding, the backdrop, and the knowledge of the truth, those two things, they're wonderful, and they're absolutely necessary. And I think we grasp that to a good degree in America. I think where we're missing it, though, is the exponential part that multiplies. These two add, this multiplies these into a power way beyond themselves. The Q. Why is it necessary? Well, let me just, let me just say here, uh, the Q is what is going to, to put the gospel and, and the revelation of God's truth on steroids as we go to deal with people. This is where things become so very powerful. This is, this is a very different approach. 
Now, let me just caution you here real quick. It's very different than what we do in the average approach in Christianity today and in independent Baptist life. Okay? Now, just because it's unusual for us doesn't mean that it's unusual. In fact, it's usual for Jesus Christ. Somewhere along the line, I think we've missed what Jesus did. And because of that, we've missed the opportunity to connect with people's lives. Now, I'm not saying the gospel isn't powerful, because it is, but when you combine it, the, the message that Jesus had, with the method that Jesus had, the, the whole message takes off in an exploding kind of a way. The Q, why is it necessary? Well, because, first of all, it's going to make you interesting. You say, what? Yeah, it's going to make you interesting. You're going to be the kind of person people want to talk to. I'll tell you why in just a moment. Um, second, is going to uncover their wrong beliefs. Instead of you wondering what they think and, and somehow putting everybody into some kind of a, uh, a mold and saying everybody's like this, everybody in Africa is not the same. Everybody in the same tribe is not the same. Everybody in the same, the same village is not the same. And everybody in the same family is not the same. Everybody doesn't think exactly alike. So how do you uncover it? That's the cue. That's the cue. Exactly. And this is what's going to clarify what needs to be addressed. The, the ability to use the cue is what turns the lights on for the individual. And you can, I mean, you can literally see it when the lights come on. Their eyes pop open and they get excited. They're sharing truths with you that you would have never heard anywhere else. It's, uh, it's been kind of funny because I often will be talking to an African and I'll say something about what I know about their culture and they look at me like, where'd you hear that? And I'll say, well, you tell me, is that true or not? Yes, but white men aren't supposed to know that. I hear that quite often. Why do I hear it? Because an African told me. Why did he tell me? Because I put the Q in my equation. Okay, here we go. Here's our equation again, all right? The F plus the S times the Q is what gives us clear-focused evangelism, okay? The Q, what does it stand for? Here we go. Let's see if I can get that to show up. There you go. Q-U-E-S-T. Questions that uncover and expose secret thoughts. Questions that uncover and expose secret thoughts. Uh, one of the big things here in Africa is secrets. Everybody has secrets. Everybody keeps secrets in the world. But it is especially a, a uh, unspoken, often unspoken part of African life. Everybody has their secrets. Their families have their secrets. And you're not allowed, you're not supposed to, be telling your secrets to anybody else. And so you hide things from people. Now, when, it, when you get into the culture like this, and as a white man, you're coming in to deal with Africans, and, and you're starting to talk to them about heart matters, they feel like they have to hide their secrets from you. How do you get to the secrets? Well, you see, that's where the questions come in. Do you know Jesus had two favorite methods of teaching? If you go back through the four Gospels, you'll notice these two showing over and over and over again. The first one. The first one is parables. You could have guessed that. Parables are earthly stories that tell a heavenly message. Not one way to describe it. There's other ways. Um, <clears throat> not a perfect definition, but a good one. And uh, what, what I've done is in this particular book, Scripture Diagram Graphics, I've gone through and I've taken simple drawings that people could watch, look at, and learn from. And with those simple drawings, we convey truth. And... We, we developed that book, and this is what I'm going to give you at the end of this, okay? Uh, I'll make it available for a short while. Uh, I was going to make it only for those live, but obviously with this thing cutting out, it's kind of messed me up a little bit here. Um, but this material is, was developed to relate to people cross-culturally because even though they speak English, they don't speak it well, and you don't always connect as well. So I wanted to develop something that would work. And that's what we did. I, I went to work on this, developed some of these drawings. We saw that they were working exceptionally well. We're talking several years ago before I ever moved here, uh, but I was here doing some work, 
And I went back to America, and then I gathered some of the folks in our church, and we began to work together and brainstorm and put together um, these, these drawings to illustrate uh, gospel truths that we wanted to get communicated to people. And so that's what we did with those. So parables are good. And you can use parables, you can use stories, if you will. They're very, very good. The second thing that Jesus used, and this one I think even more than parables, if you'll look carefully, Jesus used questions. To be exact, Jesus used 287 questions. He used a lot of questions. Now, you've got to wonder, okay, what in the world is he doing? Why is he asking questions? Was it because he didn't know the answer? No, 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 no. Jesus asked questions because he did know the answer. And he wanted to know what the answer was the other person would give them. He wanted them to confess, to speak what was in their heart. Why did God in the Garden of Eden ask Adam, where art thou, Adam? It wasn't because God couldn't find Adam. God wanted Adam to admit where he was. Questions make us think. Questions access the heart. Questions cause us to clearly reason through what we're saying. Questions make us admit the truth that maybe otherwise we'd kind of want to bury away in the back of our heart and not be able to, to confront. So what, what we've done is with questions, we've, we've actually uncovered the thinking of, of Africans here and got them to admit where they are, admit what they think, and to talk through it. And when they tell us something, even if it's, if it's anti-biblical, I mean against the Bible, I don't go, oh, what? No, I don't do that. I listen to what they're saying because it gives me a clue into their heart, a clue into the way they're reasoning, and then I know how to go back and, and dig into Scripture and find answers from God's Word that will answer those problems in their life. This is a hard thing for an American to learn because we're used to doing all the talking like I'm doing right now. We're used to doing all the talking. And what we need to do is we need to stop and we need to ask questions and we need to listen and we need to learn. Now when you do that, you're going to become popular because most people, especially here in Africa, they're not used to white people stopping to listen to them, to value their opinion. And then second, when you listen you begin to be aware of their thinking, their reasoning, and the way they're coming at things, and you can begin to gently, biblically, show them what God says and bring them to this place to where they have to bring their thoughts against God's thoughts and decide, will they accept God's word or are they going to hold to what they think? And this is where the walls start to come down. So what are the benefits of asking questions? And, and there's, a, there's actually a, a system of asking questions that if done properly, will unlock the thinking and teach the truth to the person at the same time. It is incredibly simple, but uh, difficult if you're an American like me who's used to doing all the talking. So you have to rein yourself in and learn a whole new way. The benefits are you help them get clear on what they understand, and you get clear on what they understand. Both of you get clear. Do they really understand? They get clear, and you get clear. It helps them to think clearly. It helps them to get their thoughts put together. I mean, how many times have I had thoughts in my head, and as I began to talk them out with someone, a close friend, uh, my wife, someone else, as I'm laying them out, they begin to gel for me, and I begin to see flaws in some of my thinking and fix it and, and put it back together, and it becomes clearer for me. That's exactly what happens when you're asking questions. And then it causes them to face the truth. As they begin to, to be asked questions, what did God say here? What does that mean? How does that apply to your life? They begin to face those questions and realize this is truth. And it, and it operates on biblical wisdom. Now, I said that the framework gives us a backdrop of understanding from the book of Proverbs. The seed of the gospel, the gospel truths that we communicate, they give us knowledge on which we can act and come to Christ. But questions bring about wisdom because we understand how to take the, the understanding and the knowledge and put it into practice. What's the next step of what I need to do now? Understanding. So here it is. Here's our formula. Take a look. F plus S put on steroids, 
multiplied by Q gives us clear, focused evangelism. Now, if you watch here, it's kind of like the optometrist who dials in the different lenses until he gets just the perfect fit for our eyes to be able to see properly. The foundation of the framework, this framework that we're building here to give them a world perspective, a world view that's proper and right, helps them understand the truths of the gospel, but the asking of questions gels these truths together and makes them super powerful so that they pierce to the very heart of the individual and cause the individual to give serious thought to the person of Jesus Christ. And what I'm saying to you is real simple. I'm saying to you that I think these are the answers to bring people to face the gospel message and make a clear-cut decision. Now, I think that I've got some, some thoughts, and, and they are thoughts, about truths under the framework that need to be communicated and truths under the seed that need to be communicated, and I think they're thoroughly biblical. However, in every culture, there are going to be nuances and, and angles that need to be seen and understood by the evangelist and those will only be understood through asking good, clear questions that help enlighten you so that you can help them. And then you'll begin to see a pattern in your society of the things that need to be covered. And you can literally build, like I have done for here in Africa, in the southern part of Africa, certainly. Um, but I've, I've built certain lessons that I feel like are, are critical for most everybody. Now, individual issues will come up and we can... We can maneuver and fix those as we go, but we hit the bulk of them by being able to design this training in just the right way. So that's basically what clear-focused evangelism is. Now, I'd like to do two things, okay? First of all, I said at the beginning of the webinar, the one that got cut off, I said I was going to give you a gift, and I still am. It's going to be that book. Um, here it is, Scripture Diagram Graphics. And now I, I can't give you a paper copy of it, but I can give you a PDF copy that you can download. And the only thing I'd ask is, please don't pass the PDF around the world, okay? Um, you, can, you can have a copy of the PDF for your own uses. And if you're on a mission field and you want to use it with some of your people that you're training, that's fine. Um, you could do that. But honestly, this, this book will help you in any culture, even in America. Uh, I've used it with doctors and lawyers. You may say, oh, that's too simple. No, it really isn't doctors and lawyers. I've seen them. They, they love it. I've used it with Alzheimer's patients successfully. Now, not people deep in Alzheimer's, but at the beginning stages that are having trouble grasping truths. It cuts across that and, and is helpful for them. So I highly recommend this book for you. And uh, then here's, here's the address that you need to go to, okay? It's purposecoachingblog.com. And, uh, oh, here it is. Okay, this one here. SDG Book. Scripture Diagram Graphics Book. FDG Book. All right? At the end of purposecoachingblog.com. SDG Book. B O O K. All right? And if you'll type that in, you can download that book um, free of charge. Take it and use it, please. Okay? Now. You may ask, okay, what do I do now? What's my next step? Well, I wish Brother Pittman was here to be able to ask questions because I know he's probably got several uh, that would help clarify this. But uh, if you've got a question, go ahead and send it to me. Let me say here's some things that you can do. First of all, you can download the book and go out and witness to folks. Number two, let me, let me talk to you about a workshop here. Are you interested? Maybe you're a missionary or a pastor. You're interested in pursuing this a little further. Um, I think I can bring you along in, in understanding and uh, cut your learning curve down a little bit, especially with the questions. Got a lot of insights there on how to use questions in a way that will get to the heart for people. Now, let me say, this: w if we're going to get together and do this in a small group, and it will be, can only be a small group, but there's got to be a few people that are willing to do this, <clears throat> Uh, number two, it can't be too large of a group, so it's going to have to be small enough. 
Third, you're going to have to be willing to participate. So you would be live on a call like the one that died on us. Um, but we'd give it a shot and see if we couldn't make it work with a few of us. And you're going to be live and participating and get recorded. And if you're willing to do that and be part of that in helping to develop this material so we can help other missionaries and, uh, and ministries around the world, then I'd be very willing to do that. If we can't get a small group together, just one person isn't going to really work well, um, but, a, but a small group I'd be willing to do. And if you're willing to do that in a public enough manner that we could actually record it and you're going to interact with us, we do it as a group, then I would be very much uh, interested in that. Real simple to get a hold of me. Um, write my email address here, pdhammett at gmail.com. Some ask, what's the P stand for? Well, it used to be pastor, but I'm not a pastor anymore. And uh, now I'm a missionary, so it stands for passionary. Passionary D. Douglas Hammett, all right, at gmail.com. Just drop me an email, let me know. And uh, if you're interested in, in pursuing a workshop together, maybe three, four sessions together, and uh, we'll see if we can put something together. If we do it, it, it would have to start in about three weeks uh, I'm very busy right now. Just have a group of guys have come in. We're getting ready to do some uh, some heavy evangelism in the villages here over the next two weeks. So it'd be at least three weeks before I could get to it. But uh, would be very interested in doing that with you. Try and pass on what little bit I understand, but even more sharpening my iron with your iron so that we in turn could all get better and uh, be more effective with the gospel. You say, how effective is this? Well, here's what we found thus far. I told you we were around 18% retention rate when I first came here to the field of the people who've been dealt with. And, and most people who came to deal with people were very careful in how they dealt with folks. We're not talking about folks just coming in here, whoosh, boom, bang, trying to lead people to, you know, one, two, three, pray after me kind of stuff. That wasn't going on. But it wasn't effective because we weren't reaching hearts. Where we now are in using this approach is pushing about 88% retention rate. Now, that retention rate has not been tested long term, and it's not been tested with dozens and dozens of people. So it's a small group of people, about just under a dozen people, and, and we're, we're only talking for a few months. So we're not at the point of being able to say they've stuck around for a year. But I'm telling you, the, the response rate right now is incredibly good. In the States, my retention rate was about 80%. It looks like we should be able to hang in there around that, around that amount. And uh, I am very, very encouraged at this point. I see no reason why this approach could not be used in any culture with adjustments for their particular needs in, their, in that people group. So with that, I'll say, if you're interested in a workshop, you're willing to be a part of it and work with us, uh, three to four sessions, Drop me an email. Be glad to talk with you about that. Sorry about this getting cut off. We'll leave the book offer open for, oh, let's say, let's say a week, okay? And uh, then I'm going to shut it off. And if you go to that link, it'll end up taking you over there where you have to buy it. I'm sorry about that, but I uh, can't leave it up forever to just give it away. Okay. God bless you. Thanks so much for, for taking the time to watch this second half.